Hey, welcome to the Glenn Gower Podcast, the best podcast you'll listen to all day. <laughs> Sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Is America the greatest country in the world? That's something that I've been thinking about for the past several years. It's something that you and I grew up with. We are the greatest country in the world. We're the, we're the, we have the most power military wise. I mean, who's going to beat us? Who's going to beat our military? That's you know, right. I, I was uh, in the in, in the National Guard, Army National Guard, in the uh, late eighties, early nineties, and we um, were using night vision in nineteen ninety one during the Iraq War. Absolutely. And when uh, it was reported that uh, the pilots and the soldiers had night vision. Everyone went, went, wow, I can't believe they were doing this. Well, I saw night vision in 1989 or 1990, way before that. And we had had that technology for quite some time, but nobody knew about it. Right. We didn't, so, tell, the, didn't tell the enemy about that. So we're worried uh, ahead militarily speaking. Mm -hmm. Is America really the greatest country in the world? Now, I have some questions for you. I have no idea where this podcast is going. Don't hit <laughs> hang, me. Hang don't, on. Don't hurt me or hit me, anybody. I, I love America. I'm a patriot. I served eight years in the Army. And um, I do think it's a pretty great country. Yet, as a Christian, I think it's a pretty crappy country. So there's... There's this internal um, Tell me more. opposition. Tell me more. Why is a Christian well, it's a crappy country? Well, who exports more pornography than America? Probably China. I don't know. Do they? I don't it's know. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots of things that That's I think. That's what we get for having freedom of the press. Well, <laughs> yeah, we should talk about is freedom. Yeah, we should talk about freedom. Uh, but, it, I, but at least you can practice your religion here without being martyred or crucified or what's wrong with being martyred run run out of town i mean i think it's a great thing to be martyred okay you, you get this one chance at life and you're martyred but we're all we're off task but i want to get into some <laughs> scriptures here okay Switch, right. switching i want to get to uh, romans 13 1 and it says this let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which god has established the Authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, consequently, whoever rebels, ding, 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 whoever rebels against this authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Uh, there's another Bible verse that says, every tree is judged by its fruit. Sure. Right? So I want to get into the founding of this country. Mm. Now I'm tainting this or bringing actually some real uh, grace and uh, truth into this, the beginning of our uh, movement in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So um, we have these colonial people, right? Mm -hmm. We can't call them Americans, but let's just say the colonialists. They had, we had 13. The colonists. Uh, the colonialists, the colonists. Yeah, whatever. I, see, I, I, I'm a little smarter than you because I know how to say that word better because okay. it makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. It does. The colonial. <laughs> colonial. Okay. All right. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, so they were under uh, whose authority? Uh, at that time, Great Britain. Right. And Great Britain had a? What political king. system? Yeah. King matriarch. So they had a monarchy. Monarchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, monarchies, monarchies have been established for probably how many years before that? Oh, hundreds, hundreds of years. And it was the ruling, governing principle based basically in all tribes. Oh, yes. And it was just understood you served the king because the king provided the land. He provided your protection. He provided the army. When he called, you went and worked in his army. Yeah, it was just how things have been done for thousands of years. And it's a, it was a no-brainer. You served the king, and the king also served who? You. Well, you, but I mean, he was submissive to whom? In a monarchy. As far as himself, I think just his his court, right? Well, from a Christian perspective, he was submissive to, think of David, the king of Judea. Who is he submissive to? Himself. Uh, this is too easy of a question for you to miss. God. Oh, but I thought... David turned away from God and did all kinds of... Well, David of... was a knucklehead at some point. Okay. I all mean, right. I've heard that David was really the, the most holy guy, the whole, uh, just a great holy kid. And he had that one issue with Bathsheba, which, thank goodness, uh, she's not around because you and I might go, whoa, mm -hmm. she's gorgeous. Um, but David, even David was submissive to God, the king. So in monarchy, and we poo-poo monarchy in the United States, and, um, and maybe there should be a return to monarchy someday. Um, but the king is submissive to God, 
because God is the author of monarchy. Okay. So, so here, setting this whole thing up, we have all this colonialists, which you would say colonists. Um, they are submissive to the king who should be submissive to God. Sure. And they... I'm tracking you. Okay, so they wanted freedom. They wanted to break away from the system. Yes. So the question is, do they have a moral right to break away from the king? When the king no longer serves God, yes. When the, God, when the king no longer is submitting to what God has intended and gifted him to rule, then yes. Okay, so the text doesn't say that at all. I mean, I know I'm just using one scripture, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it doesn't have that clause if the king stops ruling. Because even St. Paul would say, slaves, be obedient to your master. Now, St. Paul isn't um, affirming slavery, but he's saying there's order mm -hmm. and you have to obey your master. And I think we could apply that to this uh, situation in America the colonialists should have been submissive to their king. Even if he wasn't serving God, he still has authority over them. Like David, um, he stopped serving God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he committed that sin against Bathsheba. You know this is going, I know, I know and you don't like it. I like, no, I'm just... You like where this is going. I do like where this is so, going. But David is still king because God anointed him. Sure. So if, if God is the author of monarchy, uh -huh. do did the people in this civilization have the, the moral and legal right to rebel. Well, they had no legal right to. Absolutely not a legal moral right. I wasn't there. So I would say, but judging on history and what I've read. How about just theological right? The logical right? Theological. Theological like, like, right? Because we have, listen, we have, we have human laws yeah. and we have civil laws. Yes. And then we have government laws and then sure. we have church law. Yeah. But there's something that supersedes all of these laws. Even church laws, God's law. God God's has law. a law. Okay. Like there's 10 commandments in the Old Testament. That's right. We don't just say those are now gone. Right. I've heard Protestants actually say, we don't have to live by the 10 commandments. And I say, well, really? When did Jesus um, fulfill those? Right. Because he wrote those. Right. So That's a good you, question. You don't just throw them out. No. So there's this idea of God's law. Okay. Right? Yes. So... You, so if I understand the question right, for our listeners, you're asking, did the colonists, the colonialists, have a right to rebel against the monarchy? Rebel and break away from the king. Yeah. In God's order, God's design, God's plan, or their own, from their own standpoint. I would say they fall into David's camp in this one. They, they shouldn't have, but they did. Because they didn't agree with the way the king was leading the country the way they were leading their colony taxation without representation they were being submissive and suffering for it okay is that working out for us for you and me today is that really working out great for us when you think about uh, in a podcast we did i don't know which one which number it was but i put up on the screen uh the taxes they were paying to the king percentage wise then and what we're paying now it's quite a bit more yeah, we're that, over 50 we're, that we're paying to our government than they were paying to the king. Mm -hmm. So what did we really gain? I mean, I think for 200 years. I mean, we're celebrating this week the 247th year since the declaration of our independence from Great Britain. I would say the first couple hundred years were much better, not until the turn of the 19th century when we started having national debt and started taxing people to fund things that the American people don't even know about, that's where we turn the corner of this isn't good. Slide of hand. That's well, where that's where I'm at with it. Or is this isn't working? Because ladies and gentlemen, you have to admit one thing, one core thing. Mm -hmm. America is the youngest child in the family. Right? Oh yeah, we're the baby. We're the baby of the family. Oh, we're yeah. only 200 and some years old. We're, right. we're pretty new to governmental cultures or right. however you say that right politics is it working is our freedoms really working one of the things that jude and i were talking about is that and i have to do some research on why but i think i can give you a short answer or a quick answer that one of the popes condemned our version of freedom of press freedom of religion freedom of speech and i think the reason why is you want to guess i'm not sure i'm speculating i'm not sure I'm not sure either. I'm going to do some more research. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know, tell me what you think. But I'm guessing, 
that they just went way too far. Freedom doesn't mean the ability to do whatever you want. It means the willingness. To do what is right. Right. And that's what the freedom of press, freedom of religion, freedom of speech got wrong. You have to do the right thing. So if it's obscured in the beginning, then we're not really free, which reminds me of a TV show you and I love. Tell me more. I'm not sure. You should know Yellowstone. This. No. Oh, dang it. I want to call you a knucklehead. Okay. I don't know. In the context of politics a West and, Wing. and freedom of the press, you're so close. We do like West Wing. New, newsroom. The newsroom. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as I was preparing for this podcast yes. and thinking about, is America the greatest country in the world? I showed my son at the beginning of uh, the newsroom. The Season opening one. news clip. Yes. Yep. And... Um, first of all, he, uh, Jeff Daniels is his, is his actor's name. I can't remember what his character's name is. Um, Will something. Yeah, Will. I, I don't remember. Will McAvee. Will McAvee. Yep. He didn't want to answer the question. Then he went off and said, we are not the greatest country in the world. Then he started uh, sharing all these stats, how we're 26 in this and 27. Do you know where you got those from? I don't. The CIA World Book fact book. Oh, anyone can go look it's, at yeah, it's it's at the CIA website and it's we, we are ranked all over the place for mortality, more infant mortality, obesity, all this stuff. It's it's great, but he stats his statistics cuz I got really curious about how he did that, but it's all from the CIA website. So Dr. Willard? Yes. <laughs> We're an official title now. <laughs> you have worked, worked in, in Washington? DC. Oh yeah. You have rubbed shoulders with congressmen, senators, so to speak. Oh, yes. Very important people. Oh, yes. Um, Alan the, Greenspan, financial people, yes. Did you have a conversation with him at all? Yeah, I just talked to him on the little train, yes. Alan, I remember Alan Greenspan. He was the soft landing guy, yep, right? Yeah, and the Hillary Clinton. and Yeah, I've seen them all. Oh, I shook your hand. You know Hillary? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is America the greatest country in the world? Absolutely not. Why do you think that? It's not thinking. It's fact. It is it is a fact. What he talks about in that newsroom show is 100% fact. We are not the most literate country in the world. We are not the most free country in the world. We are, we are not the greatest country in the world. Now, if you want to talk about just from sheer military strength like he does, yeah, we outspend every other country on the planet like 20 to 1. So, yeah, our military is better, it's bigger, it's stronger, but we also pay an enormous amount of tax for the Pentagon and for our, our military defense. But the rest of it, our literacy is down, our mathematical comprehension is down, our overall work ethic is down. Yeah, we, this is not the greatest country in the world. We have pockets where we can live our very best life, but as a collective, we don't we don't have that kind of bar. We don't have a national leader that sets the bar that America is going to be the greatest country in the world. For for every A roll, A honor roll student in the United States, there's a hundred in China because that's how much they outnumber us in population is a hundred to one. If we went to war with them today, they would just kick our butts because there's a hundred people for every one of ours here and they're forced military training, two years, mandatory service. They don't own land in China. The government owns it. You get a 99 year lease on your home and on your property. Are some things here better? Yeah. But like you can go to Geneva and your chances of having infant mortality are exponentially less there than here. Like, we have way more children die here than they do there. Why is that? Smaller country, smaller population, better better healthcare system, better neonatal, prenatal care system. You know? I mean, there's parts, you know, we from South Dakota, there's parts of this country and parts of this area that are desolate. People don't go to the doctor. People don't get help that they could get. People are strapped for cash, paying too much taxes. So they don't. Go make sure that they've got a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby coming. And so our child mortality rates are higher than like 50 or 60 countries in the in the planet. Yeah. Uh, what's a second to that? I mean, that might be the worst part of this country. There's some really bad things about this country. Pornography is, is a bad stain 
on the American fabric. It really is. When you think about how much the, the porn industry makes, you take the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, and you add up all their revenue together, it's not even close to the money the porn industry makes in this country. And it's sick mm-hmm. to think about. But one of the things, ladies and gentlemen, especially you older than 50 or older, if you want to ask yourself is... Uh, when you judge the free shoot, let me try that again. When you judge the fruit by its tree, look at those coming out of our public high school systems. Look at what kind of young gentlemen and young ladies are coming out. Mm-hmm. Look what's happening and ask yourself, are we really the greatest country in the world? Because that is the fruit that we're producing. Not only are kids socially warped, and what's ironic is we homeschool, and people have told me, I had a sister tell me, what about the social? I wanted to say badly because I didn't want to fight with her. I, I, look at the high schools. Is that what you want for my kids? Look how weird they become. Mm-hmm. You want that kind of a social? Mm-hmm. So, um, And we, we keep our social circles small to keep our children around like-minded, like-focused people. That's why my kids hang out with your kids, why your kids hang out with my kids. Like self-resilience, self-strengthening Um Strong people of faith are developing to have a, a humility towards God and life and appreciate how fragile and how gentle and how beautiful it is. I'm worrying about all this other stuff that the world's dealing with. So let's go back to the beginning. I agree with you. It doesn't make any kind of sense to me that the colonialists had a, a legal moral right to rebel. I mean, you go back to the Boston Tea Party. Uh, Judah was telling me earlier um, that had nothing to do with um, as his teacher, his history teacher was saying, had really nothing to do with the taxation. Um, it, it had more to do than, uh, what was it again? It's on my list here. Uh, pointed to it. Yeah, the Tea Act, subsidized East Indian Tea Company. It wasn't a tea tax at all, but the issue was the people in Boston, they wanted their own tea, so... They must have thrown this East Indian tea overboard. And and then that kind of took over this rebellion against England. So the, so the math is a little fuzzy here. There's a lot of fuzzy things. Well, because the East Indian Trading Company was owned by Great Britain. Is that true? Yeah, that's okay. because they sailed around the coast of the Cape Horn of Africa and went into India. And they harvested the tea from the Indian colonies which we now know as India today, which is what part of led Gandhi to become the man he became. But yeah, I mean, that's why there's also like the whole southern tip of South Africa, of Africa, which we know South Africa is all a British colony too. They were stop off points for them with their shipping. Yeah, that's interesting. So that makes sense. It wasn't a tea tax at all. But you're told that Britain was doing these horrible things to us. Mm -hmm. And there may be truth to that. I don't know. I'm not saying the... That didn't happen. But then you have um, all it's these... It's an easy one-liner. It's it's the, the three-second answer. Taxation without representation. Well, okay. Sounds like a good reason to break away from a king. Was it so bad? Was it really so bad? And would you trade what they had for what we have today? The kind of culture that is being bred in the uh, America... Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, Great Britain doesn't have guns. They don't allow guns. You know, you can't own a gun if you're in Britain. I'm talking about 200 knife. years ago. Well, but I mean, so bad, right? But I mean, the road has marched further on. So I think the better comparison is: is would we like to live the way Great Britons are living now today, or are we happier with our lifestyle? I would choose our lifestyle. Yeah, even though it's not great. No pun intended. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what would make this country great again? Um, this is not a maga. A more, uh, this is not a maga talk. This is not a maga promotion. Uh, a moral directive. A moral servitude towards a higher power and a higher purpose of life. You know, I think if you just simply understood that, you wouldn't question where you're at on the spectrum for abortion. I don't think you would question where you're on the spectrum for serving community, serving your country, serving your world, serving your family. If it just was not about you, it was just a about something greater than you, a big, <laughs> we, we call them um, um, B-wags, big, wild, hairy goal, B-hags, big, hairy, audacious goals. 
You know, you got to have BHAGs. And you just got to have something that's bigger. I mean, that's why I think was so inspiring about Martin Luther, and not Martin Luther King, but um, JFK. He stood up as a president and said, we will be on the moon. And the entire country rallied around that concept for four years to get this, the NASA and the space program and put a man on the moon. Like When you have a, a strong leader that sets something really morally directed, it makes it really easy for everybody to suddenly have purpose in their in their life. I think that's what our country has lived without for the last three years is you got really no moral directive, no 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 real purpose. You watch every what, 15, 16. So we just got this new thing called Superbox. It has 1100 and super box. Yeah, it has 1147 channels on it. Is that enough for you? It, yeah, you know, there's five. There's really five that I wanted. <laughs> How do you get a super box? Uh, you got a guy talk to a guy on the internet and he gets it to you. Is it legal? No. Ah! <laughs> no, but. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just ended the program. Thanks for <laughs> tuning in. Dennis is doing something illegal. No, I've but, heard these um, about these super boxes. Yeah, and so the the thing about it is. We are so tolerant to letting ourselves be entertained by these, by Xboxes for our kids, by Switches for our kids. I mean, last night we drove home from Minnesota after helping my dad put diesel in the in the swather, and for forty minutes, my kids watched out the window and either watched God's lightning show or man's fireworks for forty minutes. And we stopped and just watched, watched, and if I would have had a a screen in front of them, they would have missed it all. And I think there's part of our cultural imperative right now is we don't have that. Why the heck are we here? Why, what, why are we going to be the, why do we want to be the greatest country in the world? What does that mean? Greatest country in God's world, the greatest God, greatest country serving God's purpose. I don't know. I leave it to you. Like, where are we at with this? Because you brought up the question, is America the greatest country in the world anymore? We are not the greatest country in the world, but we could be. That's Will McAvee. Yeah. So how, how, how do you see that happening for our listeners? We have to turn back to God. We have pushed God out of this culture. If you look at the stats when they pushed out prayer, when prayer got pushed out of the public schools, 1970, mm-hmm. you look at the stats of our moral acts, it just goes, and it's really simple. You push God out. He's a gentleman. He says, okay, but just so you know what you're getting yourselves into, I won't be there to help you. Mm -hmm. We don't want you. We want to do this on our own. Well, okay. And then the immorality went this way. Pretty soon you have, um, again, you've always had abortion. You've always had a marriage and divorce. You've always had all these terrible acts. Mm -hmm. But now they become legal and accepted. And then you get pressured or shamed into um, not embracing them, mm-hmm. i.e. tolerance. Mm-hmm. So there's only one way back. God is the only way back. And Are we too far gone? No. No, no we're not. Um, what's it going to take? What's it take going to take to get us back to God? What's probably going to happen looking at history is war. God may allow civil war or some kind of war some kind of persecution because it's it's not an easy way back you have to go through the fire every marathon runner you you don't just show up and say my goal isn't to win but i'm going to run 26.2 miles today <laughs> you, you know imagine me i'm going to run 20 you could do it you you have to train you have to go through the fire we're going to have to go through the fire ladies and gentlemen if you want a great country you can have it but god has to be put back on his throne and you have to uh, embrace the pain. If you do that, America can be the greatest country in the world again. Hmm. Well said. Well said. That's all I got in the tank, buddy. Yeah. This is the uh, the point of celebration of 247 years this week since the sec- signing of the Declaration of Independence. I had a very interesting conversation with a, a guy in town who's got freedom all down the side of his truck. He's, uh, he's a really neat guy. Uh, love visiting with him. And I mean, I think in the course of conversation with him, he told me three times, God bless America. God bless America. God bless America. And I thought about that as I drove home of, yeah, God 
bless America. You, you think about that from the context of our founding fathers. But weren't our founding fathers pretty moral men from everything that we've, we've learned in our history classes? And shouldn't we really be saying, Americans, praise and honor God, and then God will bless America? It's a better way to say it. You know, if you look at the life of John Hancock, you know, very, um, seemed to be very important because he had a, such a nice big signature. But why did he sign it so big? Do you know why? I don't. He was giving the finger to the king. Oh. Because the king was after him, mm. trying to find him. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what he was being charged with. Smuggling. Smuggling. I think so. And so he signed it really big to give a, a, sorry, but a finger to the king. Well, guess what happened? The king caught up to him. Yes. And, and it didn't go so well for him. All 56 of the men. There's actually a really interesting little uh, uh, thing on the History Channel or from Hillsdale College, something they put out. And they did like 30 minutes on all of the signers of the Declaration of Independence and how all of them lost their wealth. They lost their lives. They lost their family. Like they sacrificed enormous amounts to sign that document. Yeah. And the next question, this could be, should be another podcast is how does Freemasonry that was started in 1717 in England, um, how did Freemasonry influence this rebellion? Because if you think about history, Mm -hmm. Right. You have the revolution in the 1700s in America. Right. And then you had the French Revolution that followed that. And both of those revolutions knocked off the king and they moved from monarchy to different governing um, parliaments. Parliaments. Yep. And so, again, I, I do think monarchy is the best. I do love the Constitution. I think it's a, the way I read it. It's it's more than brilliant the way they do it. You have Congress and Senate having to pass the same thing and going through different processes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I still think monarchy is king. I'm a Christian. I, it makes sense to me. Okay. God bless so you. So we have to bring God back into this. If you don't want to bring monarchy into it, I understand that. But we have to bring God back into our culture. Other than that, other than that we are... But when you have God as the sign of your culture, you don't have balance. That's the beauty of a democracy and of a republic, the way they wrote it, is that you know, balance, you know, that president doesn't have sole control over what's right and wrong. You have your judiciary system over here that tells you whether the rules are right or wrong. And you've got your congressional or your executive or your legislative branch over here. That's making sure those laws are kind of consistent. You know, that's, that's way better than having one person tell you what's right or wrong. Yeah. You can just vote your way to hell. That's right. <laughs> we can all just vote our way to hell, right? That's right. And and then uh, it could be a consensus. We're all going to get there. What did the Czar of Russia say? Was it the Czar of Russia, or was it uh, uh, voting isn't what's important? It's who's counting the votes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I hope you leave some comments, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and go check out that CIA World Factbook. You would you send me a link, and I'll put I it in would, the show notes. Absolutely, it's incredible because you can search it for every kind of thing you can imagine. Childhood obesity, childhood morbidity, adult obesity. I mean, just anything health-wise. And that's where he got all those references for. That's all I got. All right. Last word. Takeaway for the day? Takeaway. I, I think I already said it. If you don't have God in your life, and this country doesn't have God uh, at the core of everything, that's really what chastis chastisement is. It's not that God punishes us. We push him away from us, mm -hmm. and then we bear the consequences of that. I would say practice your own monarchy at home. Be the king of your home. Have your queen. Have your children honor and respect you. Serve them well. Have them respect you well. And start there. I like it. Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you really are loved. May God strengthen the bars of your gates. gates.